Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Lindsay and this is Waldorf Inspired Roots. In today's video, I'm going to share the only 13 categories of toys that I feel a child truly needs. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I would love to hear questions and feedback in the comment section below. toddler was born, we decided that we wanted to sort of minimize the amount of toys that he had. Over the years, I've discovered that when children have too many toys, they oftentimes um, don't really appreciate the toys that they have because they have so many. So if one breaks, it's no big deal. But um, I have learned that when you keep it simple and a little more minimalistic with the amount and the types and if you put more thought into the the types of toys that you're you know bringing into your home then you often times will have a child who appreciates their toys more and isn't overstimulated and is able to use their imagination even more. So one of the other things that we focus on is having open-ended toys or imaginative play toys in our home. So if you are new to my channel, we are a Waldorf-inspired family, but I also draw some inspiration from the Montessori philosophy. What that means for us or what that looks like for our family is we prefer toys that don't have batteries or lights or you know flashy you know things that it does um, we like toys that are simple and don't play for the child we like toys that the child has to initiate the play instead of just pushing a button and things happen um, and you get that instant gratification so you know, for my son, that has really helped his imagination and creativity to blossom. Because we, you know, personally enjoy uh, toys that are more natural materials and uh, we're not a big fan of plastic, a lot of the toys that I will show you today are, you know, wooden or, you know, silk or um, fabric or natural materials. But I do want to preface this video by saying, you do not necessarily need to purchase the same toys that I have, just having toys within these categories. And there are so many different kinds of toys that would fit into these categories just fine that aren't necessarily the same ones that we have. The first category of toy that I feel is very important are blocks. Now there are many different kinds of blocks and I'm going to show you some of the different kinds that we have here. So blocks are one of our favorite toys even amongst all the different categories that we have. So we have quite a bit. Just to show you some of the different types of blocks that there are, some of our favorites include stackers, and if you're not familiar with them, they do come apart and you can build with them, you know, in many different ways. And then there are many different varieties. These two are from Grimm's. This is from an Etsy shop um, by Helen Derevko. I believe her Etsy shop is called Elephant the Dreamer. Um, and I will link those below. Um, but there are many different Etsy shops and there are also many different versions of these that you can find on Amazon um, or in local shops. I've seen, you know, some different versions of them even at different thrifts, you know, thrift shops and second hand. Um, and so there's a lot of these and these are very open ended and um, the preschool kids and my and my son find a million different ways to use these. Uh, and they get very creative with these. 
Another one that we have are these Lincoln logs. I don't know if you can kind of see them. Uh, we also have these cedar blocks and um, they are tree blocks and this is from an Etsy shop called Tree Imagination and they have some really fun shapes. They smell amazing. They're made out of cedar wood and so they smell fantastic and they even have some of the castle pieces. Uh, so we have a ton of these. Uh, but more classic ones that you might be familiar with. Um, we do have a few plastic toys in our playroom and some of those include Duplos. And then another one that we love are these magnetiles. Um, and so they sort of, you know, fit together um, and you can build with them and build little walls, you know, make a teepee, have little, you know, triangle pieces as a door, make it a tent. Um, so my son has fallen in love with these. Um, so we have those. And then the other ones that I have are more standard blocks. Um, these ones are by Grimm's. They're the Thousand and One Nights. Um, you know, if you're interested in these ones in particular, they have some really fun kind of um, Aladdin-y feeling, um, you know, blocks that we love. So those are some of the blocks that we have. The second category of toys that I wanna share with you are figurines. Small world play is when your child can build a world and with, you know, with blocks or Duplos or any of the things in the block category or anything else really, uh, they can use things that you have around the house, whether it be, you know, blankets or, or pillows or boxes or really anything but they're able to build a world and then the figurines help them to, you know, inhabit it or, you know, um, be able to pretend play within that small world. So I have several different um, things here just as examples. Um, we have a bunch of these um, little peg dolls and we have whole kingdoms and I actually made these um, and so we've got, you know, little gnomes, we've got, you know, little, little people, different fabric that I've used. Um, I do have a peg doll tutorial as one of my other videos where I made these little guys um, and also showed how to tie dye felt in the same video. Um, but these are so great. These are, you know, an easy and fun way and they're very inexpensive to buy the peg dolls and you can even paint them. I actually have one in here that my son made, my two and a half year old made. He just painted it. Sorry, there's hair on it. <laughs> um, but he just painted it and then I made the little hat and we just used a piece of felt and some hot glue. So super simple um, and I plan to do some more tutorials on different peg dolls that I'm planning to make soon. Um, but again, so these are little figures that they can use um, but we made them. And so not everything has to be necessarily purchased from a store. Um, certainly not expensive. Everything can be thrifted. Um, and there's, you know, tons of different kinds of figurines. So the other one that I wanted to share with you are um, what I call invitations to play. So in this bin, we have a bunch of different figurines that I actually found in the dollar spot um, at Target. I love Target's dollar spot, but it has all of these little, um, you know, little rocket ship and little astronauts and an alien, um, some more, you know, astronauts and a little robot. And so these are little figurines. And then my son just recently off Etsy got this rocket ship. He is um, obsessed with outer space and rockets and things. So uh, we got him this little rocket. And so I put that in here. So basically it's just a basket with uh, several different things that are themed to create like an invitation to play. Um, and so it helps them, especially if you have a child who maybe is struggling with creativity or um, imagination, um, or if you're new to open-ended toys, these are great. And then these here, there's nine of them in here, but they are Uncle Goose blocks. And these are the uh, planet blocks. And so it has a picture of a planet on one side, 
Um, it has the name and the symbol and where it is in the line to the sun, um, how many moons it has on one side. So it has a lot of you know, information so as they grow they can still use them. So mixed with the planet blocks, the rocket ship, and the little figurines, that's a whole you know, activity just by itself. And we're also um, gonna be getting the moon phase blocks, Uncle Goose. They have a lot of different blocks, Uncle Goose brand does um and they're all different themes they've got ocean ones and so you can create you know really cool things with that um and it also fulfills the block component too because you can stack them and and build with them also the next type of um, example i wanted to show you are dinosaurs these are the holtz tiger dinosaurs and we have quite a few of them um we don't have all the you know all the ones that you can buy but we have quite a quite a great array of these dinosaurs. We love Holtz Tiger. Um, and then these that you see in the front are also by Holtz Tiger and they are the, you know, the animals. Um, and then they've got some ocean animals and things. They have many different sets. And then they also have knights and kings and, you know, horses with, um, you know, that are part of a knighthood or whatever, um, or a kingdom, I guess. Um, but yeah, so here's some of the animals. Now I did want to show you, uh, we also have some of their farm animals and we have, you know, the sheep, the horses, the pig, but then I also have, um, a few other animals in here that I would like to share with you. These ones are not Colt's tiger. Uh, these ones are Ostheimer, and we've got the bear, and they're very similar. Ostheimer are, are a little, um, a little more muted with the coloring. Um, they are a matte finish, so it doesn't have like a gloss on it. But we love these. So we've got the mama bear and the baby bear, and then we've got a little fawn. Uh, all, I think all of our woodland animals are these. But we have a bunch of these ones, and then we also have a brand because. Uh, Holtz Tiger and Ostheimer have a tendency to, to be a bit expensive. Um, you can use any. I've seen the, um, sorry if I pronounce this wrong, I believe it's pronounced Schleich. Um, they're Schleich animals, but there's also Schleich looking animals that you can get from Walmart or Target. So the other animals that I want to share are um, some farm animals that I have that I actually purchased from a shop on Etsy. Um, and they are three-dimensional animals too. And these, I got a whole set of them for pretty inexpensive. So I'll link them down below as well. Um, but I was just trying to show you the different kinds that within any budget, you know, there's, there's animals. In fact, the Dollar Tree even has, you know, little figurines and animals too. So uh, these are the ones that we personally love. But again, you do not have to, you know, spend a bunch of money. You don't even have to get this many uh, different kinds within this category just having you know one or two different um, you know different types of you know figurines is all you really need um, so these are just some really great examples but again you can even go to the Dollar Tree and find things and you also don't need to get all of these things all at the same time you can purchase you know just a few a few things from different categories until you build a collection all of these things I certainly did not buy all at once. They're things that we've collected over the last two and a half years. The next category of toys are vehicles. So I have a bunch of different kinds here. Um, we have some of the die cast um, Hot Wheels and Matchbox and things. Um, so we have some of those and actually some of those are from when my 15 year old was little. So that's kind of fun. Um, my son for Easter just got the Grimm's cars, um, but there's so many different kinds. These ones, we have a bunch of these kind here and these actually I thrifted. So yeah, thrifting is wonderful. Um, and then there's also, this brand is, is Hape. And so we have a few of the little, you know, Hape vehicles as well. These ones here are by Bee Toys and they're found at Target. And I believe each of these are like a dollar to each. Um, and these ones I think are found usually near the Melissa and Doug stuff. Speaking of Melissa and Doug, we do have some of the Melissa and Doug um, emergency vehicle set. These were actually purchased right near the Bee Toys. There was like a bin of them, but these were a couple bucks each also at Target. And so there's those. 
And then this one was one that was made um, by somebody and we got it at a like little shop stand or whatever um, at Pike's Place in Seattle. Um, but there's a lot of, you know, places that you can get homemade things. And then these we found at Carter's. So, I mean, really anywhere you can find, uh, you know, everything from these categories. The next um, example that I have are trains. They are the universal train tracks. And then there's just some fun little pieces and then we've got the little, um, it came with some trees. I think there were a couple other tunnels and things and then, you know, some of the trains. So the next category that I think is important are dolls and dramatic play um, things. So dolls are important, in my opinion, for whether you have a son or a daughter, it's very important for them to have a doll that is um, something that they can project their, you know, their own feelings onto and it's, um, you know, if they're going through anything or experiencing anything, it's a wonderful way for them to um, be able to work those social, you know, things out. But also having a doll is important because um, both boys and girls will be parents one day, more than likely. And uh, this is a way for them to learn how to, you know, soothe and care for uh, something else. And so uh, this doll is actually, it was mine when I was a little girl. Um, this one is by Manhattan Toys. Um, and then another idea, if you don't have a doll or, or in addition to having a doll is stuffed animals are great too, because they can, you know, play with, care for, and project onto. Uh, and then another thing, let me set these aside. Another thing that um, you can add in are, is, you know, a couple blankets or uh, things maybe from when your child was a baby even, um, you know, whether it be little hats or, you know, little clothes from when they were little uh, that they can dress them up in. It doesn't have to be something that you buy. It can be something that you absolutely already have. Even giving them, you know, a little baby bowl or a baby spoon so that they could feed the baby um, and just to um, sort of act out, you know, what they're experiencing in their life. And so having a blanket, uh, you can use, you know, one of the muslin blankets or the receiving blankets from, again, when your child was little. So that's another great thing to have, um, you know, available for your child. Um, play phones are great. So I was just showing as an example, play phones. Um, having dishes is wonderful. My son got this one for Easter as well. It's just a little tea set, but it has the little, um, you know, teacups and plates, a couple different sizes and a tray. He has some other dishes as well, but having some dishes and, sorry, that's really loud, and having some play food, those are good, again, so they can um, act out social situations and play restaurant or, you know, play house or, um, you know, whatnot. And so we have some that were actually made for my son by some uh, friend of mine's mom who crochets, so she crocheted. We have all these little guys. We've got a banana and donuts. Um, so we have a ton of these and I've actually made a couple as well. I made this little carrot. Um, and then we also have some wooden ones from Melissa and Doug that I think, I believe this is from their food groups one, but it comes with, you know, different, different things. And then also um, a really inexpensive option are the Ikea. If you have an Ikea by you or if you you know, can order offline. Um, the IKEA felt food are are a great price point and um, adorable. Um, allowing your kids to play with, you know, utensils and bowls, Tupperware, things from your kitchen, things that they can pretend to be cooking. Allowing them to pretend play with things that they can learn skills, self-help skills, and you know, real life skills is wonderful. The next category is musical instruments. Now, the ones that I have here are real instruments. This one was passed down from a friend of mine to my son when he was little. I personally love real instruments that they can continue to use, you know, when they get older, but you know, the, the sets of instruments that you can get 
um, like Melissa and Doug has some, and there's a bunch of different brands. Those are fine too, the ones with the little maracas or anything really. Um, but we have the drums here. We have a triangle that I got for, I don't know, I think it was like seven bucks or something on um, Amazon. And so that's really fun. I have a xylophone here that is a real beginner. Um, xylophone and then we've had to replace the sticks uh, quite a few times actually um, but yeah so these you know are a couple bucks to replace and then the ukulele that we have was actually passed down it used to be my oldest nephews who is now 21 and it was at my mother-in-law's house and so she gave it to Dean and so um, having instruments in the house is a wonderful addition to any playroom the next category is movement and gross motor toys. The first thing I have are these National Ge Geographic balancing stones, and it comes with 10 of them, I believe. Um, and they're all the different colors of the rainbow. Um, and so these, um, my kids like to place on the floor, you know, in, you know, different patterns and try to leap from one to the other, or, you know, you try to pretend like they're crossing a pond uh, for pretend pretend play um, but these are great and then the next thing I made actually I just purchased the wooden ring from Michaels I believe and tied on um, ribbon to make the hand kites so these are really popular and the next thing is a Sarah's silk uh, ribbon dancing wand um, another homemade item is if when your kids outgrow clothing if you have a sewing machine or even hand sewing uh, you can cut up their clothes and you know sew it into bean bags and then uh, I just used um, I believe black beans or pinto beans or something inside my friend made most of these but there are several that I made as well um, but you know as you can see there's all different you know elasticity of the because they're all different types of clothing so there's different textures which is great this one is kind of like a polyester or whatever nylon i don't know um you know and then there's like more of the canvasy and again more stretchy this one um my friend even included po the pockets from jeans which i thought was absolutely adorable um so that's another thing and this is for throwing catching uh, there's tons of games you can play with bean bags so bean bags are great uh, and the last thing I have in front of me that are part of our indoor gross motor toys are bells. These bells I purchased on Amazon and it just has Velcro. So you can Velcro it around your wrists or ankles or your child's rather. Um, and so every time you move, it, you know, it jingles. And so these are super fun. Now I do want to talk about some of the outdoor toys and I can do a separate video on some of the things that we have. We personally live in Las Vegas, um, Nevada, which is a desert. And so we don't have wooden toys outside because the sun literally just destroys them in one season um, and they would just be done. So we do have a climbing structure, um, but that again, that's not necessary either. You can, you know, um, use logs that you have and, you know, build a little, you know, stepping stone. Uh, thing with that, you know, different pavers or, you know, things or kids will just use their imagination just in your yard as it is. Um, but we do have a couple little tricycles outside. Another good idea is a swing. Uh, so if you have a tree and you want to do a tire swing or, you know, some kind of a swing and they also make swings that you can actually hook to your ceiling and have them be indoor swings and they've got hammock swings, all kinds of swings. So that's great. And it also, that's great for uh, sensory. If, if you have a child who has sensory issues, those are fantastic. The next category kind of goes along with the last category, um, which is, you know, you can use these for gross motor, but the category is a ball. Having a ball is good for, for kind of the same reasons that you would use a bean bag, but having a ball that you can roll, kick, throw, um, again with the big gross motor movements. But I wanted to separate this category 
um, because even if you didn't necessarily have anything from the official gross motor category, at least having a ball, I feel, is um, you know the basic as far as that goes. So I mean, they, there's balls like this one that's a backyard ball, um, great for kicking and things, and it also does bounce, which is wonderful for um, you know hand-eye coordination skills and things like that. It's wanting to roll. <laughs> um, also, this one I found at IKEA, uh, and it's just a soft ball, which is nice for throwing indoors, so you don't uh, so your child doesn't break things. And then I also have sensory balls here, um, and you know they're in the category of ball but you could also use them you know in the category of sensory which is the next category um but yeah so i've got these and they're balls they can throw them um they are filled with air and they are definitely soft enough that they could be thrown inside without really having to worry about you know breaking something um but they can also be used outside as well my next category is sensory items so um, these would include, um, we've got Play-Doh and this is our Play-Doh bin. And so we have many, uh, different, um, containers of Play-Doh, but we often make Play-Doh as well. Um, and then using things like cookie cutters or rollers, um, a lot of these items you can absolutely find in your kitchen. You can make Play-Doh. I'm sh you know, most people have some form of cookie cutters or using a, um, you know, a nylon knife that isn't sharp or um, a rolling pin from your kitchen or, you know, different stampers or anything really. The kitchen is a great place to find things for actually this whole category. Um, but for Play-Doh, you again, I actually do have a tutorial on making Play-Doh with kids, which is actually a really fun activity, you know, just alone by itself and then of course playing with it after is wonderful um but yeah so go check out my video for making play-doh with kids the other sensory item that i have here that we love is um kinetic sand so if you're not familiar with kinetic sand it is sand that kind of sticks together as it would at the beach um, but then when you you know hold it it will fall apart but then you can mold it into things and it'll stay and so this is fantastic. It never dries out. We've actually never had it dry out, but you can use things like, a, you know, plastic spoons. Um, we have, you know, little tools that came with the set. And then also at Ikea, I believe, they had this ice cream uh, set that came with four of the little bowls, four of the cones and the scooper and so they can pretend to make ice cream with it we use that with the play-doh as well and i feel like play-doh and kinetic sand um you know the tools that you can use go hand in hand again most of them you can find from your kitchen um, but we do have a few of the little pieces that came with one of our sets um, and then we because we have more than one kid using it we have trays that we put it on just to divide it up but you can use a cookie sheet if you want to sort of contain the mess a little bit. Um, cookie sheets work great as well. The other things that I wanted to show you that are wonderful for sensory, uh, kids can have hours and hours of fun, are different materials so that you can find in your kitchen actually. So these are black beans and these are absolutely wonderful. You can put them in a bowl or a cake pan or you can put it in a plastic bin, really anything that has some sides to contain it. And again, throw in some of your kitchen, you know, measuring cups or measuring spoons or, you know, plastic cups, plastic, anything really. Some of the, your kids, if they have their own dishes with bowls, plates and, and things like that. But this is wonderful and, and it's just another uh, tactile thing for them to, you know, experience and, and work with. And so we have a lot of bags of things like this and I just want to show you some of the examples of things that your kids will love and you can swap them out every you know every so often use them again and then we keep ours in a plastic ziploc bag so that we know you know that these are our sensory things and not something we're going to eat later uh, but we have macaroni noodles rice is another amazing one this is just white rice you, most of these things you can get pretty big amounts at Dollar Tree or you know a 99 cent store even and so it's very inexpensive and uh, your kids will have tons of fun um, these um, egg noodles are good it's 
they're bigger and it's a completely different texture than you know any of these they're all different um, and then also we have i believe these are chickpeas um, but you can really use any sort of bean rice pasta um, water is another good one um, so those are some of the ones that we have and the last sensory thing that i have in front of me is uh, another DIY that I wanted to share. So I went to our local Hobby Lobby and purchased these plastic bottles and purchased some glitter, um, some, some of the glitter and things I already had. But I just went through my craft cupboard and tried to find a bunch of different things that I could use to make um, sensory bottles. These are just little pony beads um, with a wider opening. So, and I filled it with mineral oil, um, you know, or baby oil. And I did use a super glue to glue the lids on. Um, but I also, every time that these come into our rotation, I do go through and just kind of check the lids. Oops, see, that one's actually loose, so I'll have to glue that one again. Uh, but I, we haven't had these out in a while. But I do go through and you will want to just periodically check the lids because um, you don't want your kids to ingest mineral oil, um, but also you're not going to want to clean it up either. <laughs> There's different beads. Uh, I have several different kinds of beads. This one is just filled with glitter and then little star um, like confetti or whatnot. I have one filled with shells, and then I also filled it with some blue, and actually all the shells kind of disappear um, once you mix it up. You can't see them as well anymore because of the blue, but it was just blue glitter. And then I've got this one with pom-poms, which over time the dye from the pom-poms will kind of turn your mineral oil a slightly different color, but it's still very fun. Um, this one is just orange glitter. And then this one are little mirrored like gems. So those are fun. This one I filled with, actually I'm gonna make a new one of this. I actually filled this one with the um, bells and little pom-poms to give it some color. Wasn't thinking about the fact that the pom-poms were gonna fray all apart and things, but it's still fun. Um, and so that one makes noise. And then this one has um, the sequins in it and I tried to get uh, put some color coordinated ones just to make it fun and bright and, and things. And then this at Hobby Lobby, they sell these little sets um, and I'm not really sure what they're supposed to be used for, but they're little sets of animals and they have all different kinds. They've got farm animals and things, but I got the ocean animals. And so I don't know if you can kind of see them in there, but there's a fish and a starfish and a seahorse and things and I just put the white glitter so that you could see them really well. I had learned my lesson from the seashells which um, disappear in the colors. Um, but yeah, just play around with it, have fun with it. A lot of, um, you know, a lot of things you can do DIY and they turn out fantastic and they're a lot of fun. The next category is play silks. Now the ones that I have here are from Sarah's Silks and they come in literally every color of the rainbow and then so they have the big ones that are i believe 36 inches by 36 inches um and then they also have the mini play silks and so these ones are a bit smaller um and they've got the what they call the enchanted ones that are more than one color and they you know are like swirls of color they've got the starry night one they have a rainbow one they've got one i think that's uh, called fire and so it's like oranges and yellows and reds um, and so they have a huge array of them and we love them but if you they're a bit pricey um, so if you didn't want to splurge on these I believe they're like 15 or 16 dollars per large silk and for the small ones I believe they're like 10 bucks or something around there um, but if you didn't want to spend that much, I encourage you to go to your local thrift store because people often will donate place or silk scarves from, you know, that you would wear. Um, often a grandmother's closet would have these when I was a little girl and they were fantastic and amazing. Um, but you can find them still at uh, local thrift shops. But also if you didn't want to you know, splurge on these using muslin blankets or receiving blankets. 
you can achieve the same goal with these, but there's a huge amount of things that a kid can use, um, you know, play silks or, or fabric for. Some of those things include um, using, you know, this one in particular could be a meadow because of the color. Um, they can use it for a boundary if they're making a small world zoo or, you know, something like that. You can um, use clothespins and clip it and make, you know, clip several together, you know, on something and make a fort out of it. You can, you know, tie it around their neck and it becomes a cape, tie it around their waist and it becomes a skirt or a dress or an article of clothing. Um, literally, the sky is the limit with play silks. They can be used for literally anything. You can use them for dancing and, you know, gross motor movement and music time. Um, so these are fantastic. I highly recommend having fabric or play silks or play scarves um, in your you know, playroom. The next category is puzzles. So I have several different kinds here. Um, and the first one I'm gonna show you is this one here. It's um, known as a chunky puzzle. And so it does have the little um, you know, the little puzzle pieces, which in this case happen to be zoo animals. Sometimes you'll see ones that have the picture on the back. Those ones are great for matching. Uh, this one in particular does not, but the pieces can certainly be used as a puzzle. But I love chunky puzzles because they can also be used for small world play and as figurines. So, um, you know, and, and you know, each of these characters can be used within your block play and things like that. So the next kind of puzzle that I have here is a multi-purpose one as well. So this puzzle is an actual, you know, puzzle, um, but it also has some self-help skill things that the child can learn how to do as well, including tying buckles, buttons, snaps, zippers, another um, kind of buckle. So, um, I like things that have a dual purpose, and so this is wonderful. And my son personally loves doing these kind of things. So um, now another kind of puzzle is more of a traditional puzzle. It's not a matching one, although there are matching, you know, matching type ones of this as well, where it would have the picture underneath. And that, those are really helpful when you have a younger child, and then as they get older, you know, you transition into these. Now another puzzle that he has. This is another Helen Derevko toy. And I'm gonna pick it up here. Um, okay, so this is a turtle and it has all the little leaf heart rainbow pieces. Helen Derevko does an amazing job. I have several of her things. So again, I'll link her um, down below her shop. Um, she can be found on Etsy. Uh, she also has a Facebook page and I will link that below as well, if I remember. Um, but yeah, so, oops. <laughs> um, so this is, you know, what the puzzle looks like. It has several pieces that can be used for building, but then you can put it together, you know, on a surface to make it into a puzzle as well. Um, the other thing that I love about her, her things in particular, she takes so much care and time um, into the packaging. All of her toys come in these fantastic bags. It's got her name on it. I believe it says Derevko on the bottom of here as well. I think it's wood burned into there. Um, we just love her. She does a great job. The next category is board games. So I have two here that we love. Um, there's, I mean, a million different board games that you can choose from. Some of the other ones that we have that I think are Classics are Candyland and Shoots and Ladders, um, the Ten Apples, I forget what it's called, the Ten Apples game. Uh, so board games in general are great to sit down and have time to do something that you're doing together. The last category that I have are Arts and Crafts. So we have two actually Arts and Crafts cupboards. Um, this uh, thing, if you've seen it in my videos, has um, painting and clay and things like that in it. And then we have our craft cupboard that is, you might have seen in my playroom tour. So we have a lot of crafts, arts and crafts stuff, but we try to keep a basket that is available anytime that my son, you know, is feeling artistic or wants 
to do this activity. And so this is available to him all the time and it has a very small amount of, you know, arts and crafts things in it, but it's enough that, you know, he can go to it and, and do something artistic if he wants to. So some of the things that we keep out all the time, and we do rotate things out as well, you know, I'll rotate colors and, and you know, different materials, but uh, some of the things we keep is paper. And so it's just different construction paper of all different colors. We also have some watercolor paint in here and it has one paintbrush. Um, and he, you know, will ask me for water if he wants to do that activity. We have the little bingo daughters in here. I just have three, but we have a whole bag of them, but we just keep a few of them in here. And then we have a glue stick. Um, usually we have a glue bottle in here as well. We don't right now. And then we have little scissors. These are from Ikea. I think they're like a dollar. And then we also have a little cup that has crayons. And of course, oops. <laughs> um, of course we have a ton of, we have a huge bag of crayons, but um, we just have a small amount of random colors in here. And then we also have the little Pips Crayola markers. Um, again, an array of colors. We have a huge bag, but I just kind of put some random ones in here. And then the last thing that I try to keep in here is just a Ziploc bag that has a few random things in it. Um, we have things like feathers, little pom-poms, um, pipe cleaners. We have little... Um, the pony beads. Um, the pony beads are also great because he likes to string them onto the pipe cleaners and make bracelets and things. We've got googly eyes down here. I don't know if you can see those. Uh, and then we have little tissue paper squares as well. I think that's all the main things in here. Uh, but yeah, so that is, you know, just a few of the things that we keep, you know, available to him at all times. And again, we do re rotate this out just to kind of keep it fresh and exciting. So that is all the things in our, you know, 13 categories of toys that I feel are important for every child to have. I do want to end this video by reminding you that your child does not need, you know, a bunch of things from each category um, or necessarily even something from every category. These are just the things that I have found um, are very encouraging of open-ended, imaginative, creative play, which is the kind of play that we strongly encourage here. Um, and so these are just things that can help. But again, you don't need toys at all, to be honest, because your child will use their imagination and you know, creativity to make use of anything that you have. But if you are going to buy toys, these are some of the categories that I feel are the most important to um, fill within your playroom. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I would love to hear feedback and questions in the comment section below. See you next time. Bye.